tragedy in the water. There could be a body floating around off the golf course. Young Troy faces a lifeguard's toughest challenge. Pretty traumatic for a, especially a young bloke. Professional lifeguards have been patrolling Bondi Beach for nearly 100 years. Once known as beach inspectors, they patrol every day of the year. Rain, hail or shine to keep Australia's busiest beach safe. Long before summer began, selection trials determined who would make the 35 strong team. Troy's on four minutes, which is good. While the old guard proved they could still cut the mustard, young hopefuls competed to make the grade. How much do you want the job? It's about how much do you want to go the extra mile? And that's what you got 21 year old Adriel failed in his first attempt to become a lifeguard. Just give it your best shot. Uh, I've always wanted to be a lifeguard since I was little, so yeah, I don't know. It's just the ideal lifestyle. Now he's back to try out a second time. So we've got all the new mob in the water right now, but anyone can swim up and down the pool, but the real test is at Bondi. You know, we've got six to eight foot waves and it's 14 degrees and that's going to be the real test. Mid-winter Bondi. 15 degrees out of the water and even colder in. We grab the boards. We do two boards. We come in. Prospective lifeguards here. face their second board. challenge in a grueling run, swim, and paddle. Right. How you feel? You ready to go? Oh, yeah. Someone smile for God's sake. Let's go. Despite the testing conditions, Adriel wasn't about to miss out a second time. Finish, point, please. Yeah, hey, that was phenomenal. Good work, legend. Adriel bolted in, coming first in his group. Maintained it the whole way. Pretty proud of his effort. The accomplished performance will score him a place on the team. In the next group, serving lifeguards also had to prove they still have what it takes. I can't even talk to about it, it's so cold. Come on, Ace. Take it easy, mate. Not bad for a 60 year old. Troy is one of the youngest serving lifeguards at 21. He goes, Gonzo. Oh. Affectionately known as Gonzo, he was desperate to get back on the team for another summer. Gonzo he killed it, mate. He just from, he left from the start to finish. It's not even puffing. Look at him. Hey, he's killed it. Felt oh, sick out of chocolate before. Well done, mate. Thanks, mate. Well done, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. Well done. Oh. Well done. 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 Troy will join Adriel patrolling Australia's busiest beach. This job actually means like everything to me. I left school in year 10 and um, did plumbing for a year. And after that, I kind of knew before I even did plumbing that I always wanted to be a lifeguard. You know, in the sun, like, you know, in the water all the time and stuff like that. It's, it's a pretty good job. While Troy grew up on the coast, there you go, mate. Adriel is a boy from the bush, growing up over 100 kilometres inland. I always loved the ocean, and my parents used to drive me up from Barrow to do nippers at North Bondi every weekend. From junior lifesaver 
to professional lifeguard. Adriel sees this as a lifelong career. Definitely something I want to do for the rest of my life. So I can be like H. I'll definitely be here when I'm that old. And following tradition, he's already been given a nickname. Well, Itchy Matt D gave him the nickname Kevin Bacon because he looks like Kevin Bacon. It's a busy Sunday with a dangerous combination of swell and outgoing time. At the moment, we've got a rip that's running from one end of the beach right across the other end of the beach, and we're getting board riders caught in the middle of the flags. The swimmers are getting sucked out of the flags, so uh, we're going to have to stay on our toes all over. Bacon patrols on the jet ski for the first time under supervision. Right. Middle of the flags, Bacon. Experienced lifeguards know when a swimmer is in trouble, even if they don't. Bacon sent to collect a swimmer from the rip. You all right? Yeah. You okay? Sure. Yeah, just move into shore. But he leaves empty handed. He's not out the so woods uh, yet. Yeah, I tried to get him to come on. He won't come on, that guy with the goggles. He said he's sweet. <laughs> but this swimmer is far from sweet. As Azza heads out to complete the rescue, Bacon tries a second time. This time, he's more assertive and drags him from the water. Ride it like a bodyboard, mate. Yeah, I was watching him for a while and he kept sort of like pushing off the bottom, going up, like down and then back up. And seeing that body language before, I just knew he was in trouble. So he told uh, Bacon that he was sweet, but he was never sweet. It's hard to sort of make someone get on the ski, but if that was me, I would have just told him to get on. In the deceptive rip, Bacon plucks swimmer after swimmer from the water, including 60-year-old Werner, all the way from Germany. Well, I swam out into the sea and didn't remark how much it was or how strong the, it was, and it pulled me out. I was uh, completely surprised yes, about uh, yeah. the power, yes, taking, taking, uh, pulling you. Yeah, back, it yes. is wow. powerful out there, it's sucking right out the back. So. I only know the North Sea in yeah. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. As Bacon learns about the North Sea, Bondi strikes again. I just got sucked out just there, yeah, as I was just talking to the guy that we rescued before, so it's dangerous out here today. <laughs> Gotta be on the ball. If you need help, put your hand up and Troy will come out and get you. If not, come to shore and move away from this area, please. Conditions are becoming increasingly treacherous. Troy and Dino join the team at the front line. Go up onto the sandbank, please, or up to the red and yellow flags. Two swimmers have been swept out of their depth. Yeah. Indian guy. An alert off-duty lifesaver bravely heads out, with Troy close behind. With two solid men to bring to shore, Dino backs up. Jump on my board, here. On the front, on the front, on the front. You all right, oi? Shit, you're a big boy, aren't you? <laughs> Lay down on your belly, facing that half away, up away, up away, up away. Lay down on your belly. Your chest. Your your chest. Your chest. Here. For old hand Dino, it's an accomplished display of boardside manner. Come back here to me. There you go. One more. You're right. You see these yellow signs? Look, they're everywhere. Riani and Saeed are students from India on a visit to Bondi for the first and almost last time. I have a feeling that I'm gone now. <laughs> really, I thought that it's my end. I will never forget this day because we, we are swimmers, we know how to swim. But we didn't have the breath even at that time. You kind of, you kind of see now how the, with the low tide going, going more out, the people are starting to fall off and get dragged out to the back. So that's why we seem to be going in a fair bit, because they're just getting sucked off that bank. 
For all the dangers on Bondi, young lifeguards soon discover this is a beach that can quickly flick to vaudeville. How are you? Okay. All right. Here you go. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Like that. Like that. Like a surfboard. Yeah, yeah, no, I have, to put, I, have to put, I have to put you on so I can paddle. Look at him! <laughs> there the guns. Go back around. My leg. <laughs> Just lay down. <laughs> it's hardly a conventional rescue, but near enough is good enough. Look at his face in here. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. By day's end, 15 swimmers have been rescued from Bondi's rips. Attention all swimmers, the lifeguard service has finished for the day, so we recommend you stay close to shore at all times. As lifeguards sign off, it's impossible to predict what challenges a new day might bring. It's 9am on a quiet weekday. <laughs> Lifeguards receive an urgent message in the tower. A call came from the, the police, so we um, need to act quickly. He's left a story now. Could be a body floating around off the golf course. A fisherman has spotted a body in the water off Bondi's treacherous cliffs. Lifeguards scramble. Corey's gonna drive. You go with Corey. You good? Good? Yeah. Unsure whether the person is dead or still alive, every second counts. No one can be sure if the person is alive or dead. We need to get out there as quick as we can. Corey and young Troy head into the unknown. Uh, now, can you give us an update again of what just happened? I missed most of that. Was it someone fell off the cliff or they think it's a body? It could be a body floating at the bottom of the golf course. I guess we'll probably set the deep give an oxy up on the beach. The defibrillator and oxyviva are prepared for a possible resuscitation. Within minutes, Troy and Corey make a grim discovery. Just leave it at Central, just let you guys know we've uh, retrieved the male body. Yeah, OK, copy, Corey. Troy pushes a young man's body up onto the mat. It could be a rock fisherman, a drowned swimmer, a suicide. Troy and Corey can do little but look after the body until police arrive. This is the first time you've been with a patient like this? Like this, yeah. Yeah. How are you going? You're right? Yeah, Troy's just came back from holidays in Thailand too. It's his first day back at work. So, poor bugger. Not every 20, 21 year old gets to do something like that. So, um, it's a pretty serious aspect of our work. Just a kilometre away, beachgoers are oblivious to the tragedy. Yeah, it's a real lovely day down here at Bondi. Very quiet and uh, just goes to show anything can happen at any time. The boys are taking him out, um, out to sea to wait for the police boat just so no one can see what's going on. Senior lifeguard and paramedic Bobby has been in Troy's position many times. There's a few things you don't start recess on. Henry, you've always been one of the boys. So, 
As rescue services stand by, lifeguards wait for a police launch to collect the body. Where's this boat? Troy has now been looking after the dead man for 20 minutes. Yeah, mate, yeah, I don't need to know when this boat's coming. We can't even see it coming out of the heads yet. Okay, Hoppo's just spoke to the police again. Uh, up to 30 minutes, Corey. 30 minutes. Oh, well, mate, copy that. Um, we shouldn't bring this into the beach, should we? They oh. said no. Yeah, that's a negative. Police have back. asked for you not to bring them into Bondi. Here we are. As the rescue helicopter observes above, there is a disturbing development. Just to uh, let you know, guys, we've got a shark off the jet ski. They have a head about uh, 30 metres towards the rocks, away from you. Copy, mate. Two uh, jet ski, Corey. Go ahead now. You have a, a hammerhead shark. Not too far away from you guys. Um, large enough to cause concern. It's large enough to cause concern, mate, so just keep your eyes open for us. <laughs> Oi! It's a f***ing hammerhead! We're not sitting out here with a dead body hanging off the back of a boat getting circled by a shark. Troy moves to relative safety on the jet ski. You have to think that the, the shark's just swimming around there because of uh, possibly blood in the water from, from the, 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 the body, so, yeah, it's all happening. Can't believe it. Despite the danger, Corey and Troy continue minding the deceased man. Waiting for the police boat. We've got the helicopter circling. Just keep an eye on us. There was a pretty decent-sized hammerhead shark out here before, so hopefully he keeps watching to see if it comes back again. But, um... Mate, Troy's doing a good job with the patient on the back, unfortunately. You guys know it's going to be another 10 minutes, but uh, it's confirmed they'll be 10 minutes. After holding the man's body for 20 minutes, Corey relieves Troy. We'll do a full debrief with everyone that's involved later on and uh, that brings out anyone that's a bit uncomfortable with it. News of the tragedy will soon spread to the man's family and friends. One on one's hard with the parents, mate. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll come with you for sure if they want to have a chat. Thanks, Eve. Chris, um, I remember like when we, when we got that guy at the start of the year off Bronny, yeah. the guy kept ringing Harry's, the yeah. dad, and it was, uh, it was playing on his head heavily, you know? Yeah. It's a bit easier when we can all just sort of sit down and have a chat about it, so... Thanks for that. OK. Proud of yourself, mate. You did a real good job, mate. It's not an easy thing to do, get someone out of the water like that up onto a mat, especially when it's your first time, mate. So, you know, try, try and find the positives out of it. You know, I know there aren't many. After almost an hour, water police finally arrive. I'm just pretty, uh, feel just a bit upset that, that we didn't have a chance to help help the poor guy. You know, we don't know the story behind it, but if he did fall off and accidentally, and you know, and he was was conscious there for a while, I'm sure uh, we would have had a good chance of getting him back. But I think it was just a bit too far gone. That's all we can do. A little bit rattled, a little bit rattled, especially for Troy. That was his first sort of um, time that he's dealt with a deceased patient, so um, a bit more concerned about Troy than myself, really. 
you know, we've chosen this as a job. We, everyone's aware of what can happen. You know what I mean? There's a hundred different scenarios that can happen in Bondi Beach from, from drownings to shark sightings to people falling off cliffs. You know, we deal with something different just about every day. So we're aware of what goes on, but that doesn't make it any easier when it actually happens. It's not a fun thing, but it's um, something you've got to do. Oh, you're on the jet ski, Yeah, myself and Troy. Yeah, I don't know. Had no shoes. Didn't seem like he had any ID. Troy, is it? Yeah. Yeah, you were just your date of birth? 21st to the 12th, 1987. Yep. Pretty traumatic for a, especially a young bloke. I can still remember the face of the first one. It's something that sort of sticks by. I don't know why it is with the first one, I suppose, because you've never seen something like that before. Yeah, after it, I was still in a bit of shock for um, probably a couple of hours. Didn't actually really know what to feel like. I had so many things going through my head. Just, it's very, very horrific to, to go to a situation like that. It's, um, it's something I'll definitely remember for a long time. Troy will be offered counselling, but can also rely on the simple support of the lifeguard team. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. 21, exposed to a dead body. A lot of people are still in university and all that type of thing and still doing fun things and fun occupations and occupations that are very guarded and, and removed from death and um, destruction. And um, yeah, Troy at 21, he's doing really, really well. Police later revealed the man was Douglas Killen, 32 from DY on Sydney's northern beaches. He was last seen on the night of January 22nd, the suspected cause of death, drowning. Next time on Bondi Rescue, summer's biggest heat wave. They're going to be dropping like flies later on. Can you get some more Then, summer's big chill. Freezing. What happens when there are too many surfers not enough waves.